Welcome to another Visual X Masterclass, continuing with our Mets of Finance or Financial Mets. I want us to look at the topic compound interest for now. It is between four to six marks in your examinations. I want us to look at how they set it in the examination. Must enjoy this section. Uh, remember one thing, how do you know that it's compound interest? If there are no regular payments that are paid every month, you forget about these two formulae because future value there are regular payments paid every month, present value there are regular payments paid every month. And it's usually the second part of your question. When it's, co when it's these two formulae, it's a once-off payment and there's no any other regular payments made. It's a once-off payment. And the, the question will tell you whether it is simple interest or compounded interest. Compound interest, we use words like reducing balance. Then you'll know that it is compound interest. Let's look at how this was set in this one. Remember one thing and one thing only. Collecting your data is important. That's where your English comes in. 1,500 is invested at 12% per annum compound interest. And I'm told it's compound interest. Therefore, I'm going to use this formula. Remember, if what I'm putting in increases, so it will be plus here. If I'm putting in decreases, depreciates, so it will be minus there. 1,570 is invested at 12% per annum compound interest. After how many years will the investment be worth 23,000? Go to the exam with an expectation. What is it that I expect in the exam? Let's look at, let's look at compound interest, for example. Let's just look at this formula. Let's look at this formula. A is equal to P into 1 plus I raised to the power N. What do you think? This is what happens in this section. You'll be given all these other variables and you'll be required to find one. What do you think will be the easiest to find in this formula? What do you think will be the easiest to find between total amount and P, I, or N? Yes, you're correct. It will be very easy to find A. You just plug this and push it in your calculator and find the solution. That's number one. Number two, what will be the next easier to find? When I look at this formula, the next easier to find will be P. Right? What will be the difficult one to find? It will be I and N. Those two, are, they think it's difficult to find, but it is very easy. That's why the exams always ask you for I and N. So go to the exam, have and practice how to calculate your interest rate as well as your N. Look at this question, what is it asking for? You'll find that most questions in common interest, they can either be asking you on about I or about N. 1,570 is invested at 12% per annum compound interest, that's important. After how many years? Ah, this one is asking for N. And N is the exponent. Therefore, if you've done your functions, you know that you, you, you've got involved logs there. After how many years will the investment be worth 23,000? Let us collect our data. Let us see what we have. 1,500 is it. It is invested. It's the one that we put in, into, into, into this uh, bank. So it is P. It's the money that we put in. So P is 1,570. We know what is our P. 1,570 rand is invested at 12% per annum. Ah, something comes out there, uh, which is I. I is equals to 12%, 12, 12 over 100. Right? If you go to your calculator, check what is 12 over 100. As, as we go along, we'll be explaining a number of things. This is 12 divided by 100. This will give us uh, 0, 0,12. This will give us 0, 0,12. Remember one thing and one thing only. When it comes to the math of finance, you don't round off. You only round off at the end. Suppose here yeah, I was getting a value that is equal uh, screen circles a calculator. You don't have to write it in decimal. Leave it in this part it, 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 as a fraction form. Don't take it into decimal. Leave it as a proper as a proper fraction. Don't because we don't want something that is rounded off. You only round off at the end. Can you imagine when you round off all these values, you might you might end up paying people maybe fifty cents more then th that bank will, will collapse. Uh, so that's what we have. If it is a smooth value, you write it down. If it is a, a, a value that is full in your calculator, write it as a, as a, a proper fraction.
1570 is invested this is captured at 12 percent per annum this is captured compound interest i know that it's pushing me to this formula once they say compound interest then i know that i've got to use that one whether it's plus in between or minus i don't know yet this is invested at this percent at this uh, interest rate after how many years i know that it is looking for n when they say after how many years this is what we're looking for Will the investment be worth 23,000? What is this 23,000? Remember, I'm putting in 1,500. This is the interest rate. I don't know how long am I leaving this investment in this particular institution, but I know that after a certain time, this 1,570 will grow to be 23,000 rand. What I've put in it, is it increasing or decreasing? It was 1,570, now it is 23,000. Of course it increased. So I know that here I will have plus. And I do have the value of A now. This A is equal to what? Uh, it's 23,000. That's what, that's what I have. Collecting a data makes your life easier. You can see what you have and you can see what you don't have. This is the main one. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for N. As I said to you earlier on, most cases will be either be asking you I or N. So you go to the exams having practiced those two in particular when it comes to compound interest. Right. Did what I put in, did what I put in grew? Yes, it grew to 23,000. So it's compound increase, not compound decrease. So I know which formula to use. Let's, let's write it down, copy it correctly. It is A is equals to P into one plus, because it grew, it moved from 1,570 into 23,000, it went up. So it's plus what? Uh, I raised to the power N. Now we substitute. It's simple substitution. Grade 9 substitution. Do I have A? Yes, we do have A. What is the value of A? It is 23,000. 23, 1, 2, 3. 23 blocks. What is P? Yes, we do have P. It is 1,570. We were given. It is 1,570 into. What is I? My I is 0, 0,12. 0, 0,12 plus 1, it is 1,12. It makes my life easier if I put it in that form so that when I push it in here, it will make much uh, more sense. Raised to the power n. Ah, raised to the power n. That's what I'm looking for. I don't have n. Now, it, I've got only one unknown. I can solve the problem now. It becomes basic algebra. From here, once you substitute, it becomes your algebra, your bread and butter problems. Uh, what is it that we're looking for? We're looking for n. What is the first thing to remove so that we can have n? The first thing to remove is this 1570. So I divide by this side, I will divide by 1570. This side, I will also divide by 1570. So that uh, this divides the year once, right? This is what we have. What is it that we have? We've got this one, which is 2300 zero, zero, divided by 157. All right? This is the same as 1,12 raised to the power n. All right, that's what we have. Remember, look what I've done. I've just cancelled these two zeros. There was a zero there, there was a zero here. I don't have to write it. But you can push it in if you want to. That's what I've done. Those zeros are no longer there because they are the same. 157. That's what we have. What is it that we're looking for in this particular case? We're looking for n. Now, the, 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 rule of, the rules of exponent says, if what I'm looking for is the exponent, I must work on making the basis the same. So as, as I look at this, there's no way where I can change this into 1, 1, 2 so that the bases are the same. If I can't do that, then I go to logarithms. Let's understand what are logs. If I've got uh, a number 8, 8 is equal to 2 to the power x. Right, right. And I'm looking for x. How do I bring that x down? To bring this x down, I've got to apply the log, log the lo logarithms. What is what is a log? A log of a number is its exponent at a particular base. This number is called the exponent. This is called a base. This whole number is called the power. This whole is called the power. We call this one the exponent and this one is the base. 
Now, the definition of a log says a log of a number is its exponent at a particular pace. Let's write it down. A log of a number 8 is equal to its exponent. What is the exponent? If change in this exponential form, it will be x. What is the base? The base in this particular case is 2. Where is the base? It is at the bottom. So you go and put the base at the bottom. So that's how you change uh, from exponential form into a log form. A definition says of a log, a log of a number is its exponent at a particular base. So log 8 to base 2 is going to be equal to x. If you push this in your calculator, you'll see that it will be equal to 3. So this is how you change it. As I do this, what am I actually doing? I'm making x the subject. So I've got x equal to something. I've got the same thing this side. I've got a particular value. This is the base. This is the exponent. It's the same thing. A log of this number is the exponent at a particular base. So I write this in a log form like we have done there. I am saying a log of this number, which is 2300 over, which is the same number, 157. A log of this number is equal to the exponent, which is n, but what is the base? You put the base down, it is 1, 1,12. Therefore, n would will be equal to, you push this in your calculator, make sure you push the correct log button, the one that provides for both the number as well as the, the, the base. So we've got log, where is my log, where is my log? This log, uh, we've got 1, 1,12, 1,12, 1, then we go up, uh, it's a fraction form, uh, what is my numerator? It's 2300, 2300. I uh, go down. Uh, what do I have there? I've got 157. I go out. Uh, equal sign. Yeah, right. This is the answer. It's 23,687. So it's going to be 20, 23,69 years. All right. This is what it means. It means that it will take, if I'm investing 1,570, for it to be 23,000, uh, I, I, I will take 23,69 years. Uh, it is wrong to change this into 24 years. Because once I, 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 I invest this amount more than 23 years, I'm not, I'm, I'll get a value that is above 23,000. So you don't round this off. You leave it here, correct it to decimal places. It's not going to be 23, it's not going to be 24 years. Because once I invest it more than 23 and a few months, it will be above 23,000. So it is important that you leave it in decimal like that one. So that's how you go about solving problems on, 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 on compound interest. I want us to take another problem so that we, we understand it further. Thank you.